Here we go. I'm in a good mood today. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Why is that? I don't know. I feel like I got some good sleep last night. I don't want to go into all the things that have been going on, but I just feel like a, uh, I got some good sleep. And it, most importantly, it's really, really nice in Austin today. I mean, oh. It's my, arguably my favorite time of the year in the sense that it's 75 degrees, sunny, and it's November. I know. It is so gorgeous. We were actually contemplating going to the pool after this. Contemplating? And getting, what are you talking getting... about? There's no contemplation happening here. We're going. And getting some like last sun in, even though we have these beautiful days every now and then, which is nice. It's not like when we were living in New York that by this time we were freezing and miserable. Um, so it is better for sure. We definitely appreciate it. So yeah, we'll probably get some sun later. But I have to say, we just have to preface how we have to prep Eddie when we do our podcast because he hates doing podcasts. <laughs> he hates our podcast. So basically. I just put him in our bed with yeah. spa music on with the door closed. So yeah, he can just, in. It stresses him out for some reason. It's weird. Yeah, we we sort of figured out that it's the frequency of the microphone because he also does not like when either one of us are on Zoom, when I'm talking to the ladies of my program, anything that has to do with us um Doing talking our job. to a screen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he can't stand. So but Whenever we figured we have... out. We figured it out how how to uh best help him during those times. Eddie hates productivity. He just <laughs> wants to be cuddled and all that other stuff. And also, um you have started you just got back from doing your acupuncture and this was your second time? Second treatment. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, I'm not I've never done it really before. Yeah. I think this is the first time I've done it. And yeah, I, it's I'm treating some things that are going on. We won't go into detail with it, but yeah. um yeah, I I feel a little better and I've de you know determined that I've got some inflammation issues. So I'm working on that. That means diet change, that means all kinds of yeah, changes. Yeah, most of us do. Yeah, absolutely. But so, I'm yeah. glad that you're liking your treatments. Uh, I'm I liking that. I'm going to the chiropractor. I'm doing all these alternative things that I'm not. No, I'm usually a doctor going to the doctor right. kind of person. You right. know, I go with traditional medicine. Right. And I tend to go the other way. You go the other way. Yeah. And you're turning me a, on to it. Yeah, exactly. But there's also a middle, of course. Uh, we have a primary care physician. And of course, I go get my scans and have my yearly and all of that. But I like to combine both. Why not, um, right? Yeah, exactly. A little, a little mixture of both. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm getting more and more into it, and I have to say I thoroughly enjoy it. I don't know. It's just, yeah. you know, the chiropractor thing, I guess that's not technically alternative medicine. But, right. But I don't get that done often. But now I'm, like, ordering all kinds of vitamins. But anyway, that's sort of a different conversation. Yeah. And I'm wearing a shirt that I think is very fitting for our uh, I don't think conversation they can today. See it. You can't see it, but I'll read it. It's, hold on, let me overthink this. You are the opposite of this. I am. You live in the moment. I try I, to. I don't think I. It's not natural for me. It's just I worked on it. Yeah. But it's not my go-to natural. Uh. But yeah, you you are you love overthinking. Not that you love it. I shouldn't say that. You're just. It's that's how you operate. It's and you're trying to. Well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, overthinking, and it's like if I'm not overthinking it, or I'm not thinking about the future, or worrying about the future. Yeah. I feel like I'm not doing my job as a human, which is a whole other bag of issues that well, we work on in other Yeah, time. and it also sort of relates to our topic today. We're going to talk about regret. The fear of regret specifically. Yeah. yeah, the fear of regret. And a lot of it has to do with where you live. Are you living in the moment? Are you living in the past? Are you living in the future? And um, all the fears around those three different spaces. I know you're reading um, um, Eckhart Tolle's book right now. So yeah. has that been helping you? Yeah, it does. It it really does help me in many ways. Uh, um, the power of now. Oh, the power of now. Yeah. And it's it really talks about just living in the moment, exactly what the title says. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I'm learning a lot. It's really about releasing these feelings and just really focusing on what's happening in your body right now and just owning that part as opposed to anything else that's happening from the past, the future and around you, even in the present in ways, kind of releasing what's happening around you. Yes. You know, and just really, really, truly being as introspective as possible, which is, as you know, in this world today is very hard to do. For some people, for some people, not so much. Um, but it's, I think it's more of the idea of getting into a practice of it because if anyone's feeling intimidated by the idea of living in the now, rolling their eyes at it, right? Which you probably would have done I, and yeah. did do to me when we first met. 
um, it's, it's, you know, it's very, uh, n- it, there's not a level of interest. Maybe it's not attainable. Maybe it's a thinking of I'll never be that person. But once you, perhaps if someone decides to just crack the door open, then you just go into this like flood of, oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. And then you go to the next thing. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. And then you start to apply these practices and see how much better your life gets. And then you're like, okay, maybe this stuff isn't so nutty as I thought. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a two part thing too, because yeah, you're educating yourself, but also you're feeling better while you're doing it. Right. So it's very addictive in a lot of ways. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right. Um, So this t-shirt's an ode to my past. Hold on. (laughs) Let me overthink this. Um, And speaking of our topic today, the fear of regret. Uh, We watched your video on that on YouTube that we did a while ago. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Mm -hmm. Um, But it was the second YouTube video you've done, you ever did. Yeah. And that I produced. And it's so funny. It's just so different. And it's very different from what we're doing now. And um, yeah, Yeah. I'm very proud of you. You've come a long way. Oh, thank you. uh, It's it's just interesting to look back on for yeah, sure. Yeah, I think that whenever we start anything, if you start a new job, if you start a new project, you're not really sure how to step into it fully um, confident and comfortable. And I feel that now um, I'm just so comfortable talking and yeah. sharing. And, and you are too, because you wanted, when we started doing this, you were like, I'm not talking, I'm not speaking, I'm not on camera, I'm not doing anything. And you made that very clear. And here we are well, talking yeah. on camera. <laughs> yeah, here we are. It's part of our universe. Yeah, now. exactly. Like, and by the way, yeah, if you're listening, we're also on YouTube as well, if you ever want to watch it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So when we getting back to fear of regret you know yeah. we started having a little bit of a discussion before and we're gonna we decided to save most of it for yeah this he cut podcast. me off i started I'm to like, say save well what about and i started talking he's like save it, save it. do so not say what, anything and we've done a little research around this or at least yeah. i have you've done much more and yeah. what i've realized is that you know fe- uh, regret is a very complicated yes. thing it's there's a lot of facets to this. Yeah, issue. there definitely is. And just to start off clear with a definition of regret, and I actually wrote it down because I wanted to make sure I was saying the right thing. So regret is a negative cognitive or emotional state that involves blaming ourselves for a bad outcome, feeling a sense of loss or sorrow at what might have been, or wishing we can undo a previous choice. So yeah. lots to so carry unpack there. On. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to get into really specifics around the fear of regret. But to the point that you made, we did a little research. Um, I did a little research. You've done a lot of research. Uh, and this guy, Daniel Pink, had also like wrote a book about regret and the four different types of regret. And for those who are interested, you know, the, what he had outlined was number one was foundation regrets, which are regrets that represent failures to be responsible conscientious or prudent and that leave you thinking if i only had done the work you know that financial oh, right that's more that's like, like financial health related kind of regret exactly brushed it in college and then i would have gotten a better job and exactly. then that would have yeah and mm-hmm. then there's boldness regret which is over time humans are more likely to regret in inaction which are uh chances they didn't take perhaps right, right. um that more... happens all the time with i should have exactly moved into the apartment instead of buying the house exactly. or or something like that yep and then moral regrets and this category represents those times when you had a choice and took the low road, meaning you did, you're not proud of some of the actions that you've taken yeah. pretty much mm-hmm. perhaps but, you were abusive to someone in a relationship or exactly, something like exactly. that. Exactly. And yeah. then connection regrets, which is number four, which is these regrets happen when you neglect the people who matter to you, who help establish your sense of wholeness. So that would be, you know, oh, I should have been there for this person or that type of thing. Right. Um, so again, it really, I was talking to you about this and it really doesn't fall into what we're going to speak about, but I did find it interesting. And yeah. regret as a whole now is becoming like my new going down that rabbit hole because it's yeah. just, and we've the, all, you know, suffered from regret, I think. I think that's fair to say. And what was interesting about what he was saying was that um, it's not a bad thing necessarily because you can regret things and learn from it and grow. Right. And 
you know, I think it's been weaponized this word regret and, and made us to make negative emotion that comes out of feeling regretful. And it doesn't necessarily have to be like that. However, what we're going to talk about today is a little different. So why don't you explain specifically what that is? Right. So when I was hearing you talk about this, I, you know, I completely understood, but it's coming from a present sense of feeling regret right now, right? So it's a sense of looking back at your life and already feeling regret for those things that you mentioned, whether perhaps you were abusive to someone in a relationship, perhaps you decided to, instead of taking a great paying job, you decided to just take a year off and explore the world and you regret that like anything you could look back on and maybe you stop talking to a, your brother for no real reason and 10 years have gone by or whatever the situation is. So those are regrets that someone is experiencing now and can look back, see what happens and then feel, start feeling some um, regret around it. So what we're talking about and what's very prevalent in the child-free community, whether it's by an outside source of someone telling you this or someone actually feeling this, is the idea of fear of future regret. Right. So it's already you are becoming paralyzed by this fear that you may regret this in the future. So that's the difference. This is Fear, fear of future regret and what you're talking about, the kind of regret is looking back and regretting something that happened. And we actually have the specifics in the facts and the details. Yeah. So. And, and, you know, I did my due diligence once you, out, you know, explain that further mm -hmm. to me and I credit chat GPT now <laughs> on this specific thing. <laughs> Um, but I put in what you were talking about, yeah. and it said the fear of future regret is a common psychological phenomenon mm -hmm. where individuals feel apprehensive about making decisions in the present out of concern that those choices might lead to regrets later on. Then they go into a bunch of different ones, which we can talk about a little bit about. Yeah. Um, and fear of future, future regret runs really, really, really deep. And I know this because I've spoken to so many people around the world. I've spoken to all the women in my program. It's child free for me. This is a huge topic that we discuss in my program because I've even had and this happened multiple times where I've asked someone what their fear of future regret is. Like, what does it look like? What is their, what are they fearing? And we're able to break down every single thing that they're fearing, which is not necessarily true and most likely not going to be true. You know how we know that 99% of what we fear and we worry about doesn't happen. But Regardless of all of that, right, you can lay it down for someone, you can explain it to them, you can support them through it. But that fear of future regret runs so deep that it's extremely hard to get rid of, right? Just by having logic and explaining something logically doesn't necessarily take someone out of that fear. So it's up to them to work through it, to figure out like, why am I so scared of what may happen in the future? So let me ask you this. So you said that when you were younger, mm -hmm. that you had this issue of fear of regret about not having children. Right. So my question is, did you knew that you didn't want to have kids, correct? Right. But you still had fear you would regret it. I get that. Right. And can you explain for those who may feel this way now yeah. who are listening or watching, can you explain exactly what what that meant? Like how what did that feel like and yeah. why did were you fearing that? Yeah. Even though you knew you didn't want it. Does that make sense? It's almost yeah. like contradictory. Yes. I, it does make sense. And the reason was because my fear was um centered around conditioning, pro pronatalism, what I had been taught, what people were telling me. So when you have someone telling you, not I'm going to say someone, but whoever you bump into, whoever knows you, friends, family members, strangers, um, telling you, you're absolutely going to regret this when you're older. And you hear it so much and so often, it seeps into your head. It's like anything else, right? It's, it's, it's when someone experiences 
abuse, like uh, from a narcissist or something. And they're like really chipping away at you're being crazy, you're acting, they're gaslighting you. And you start to believe that you, you're, you're less than, that, okay, maybe you, your opinions don't matter. So that is what starts happening in the brain. You're just exposed to so much messaging that you're going to regret this, that this is the biggest mistake you're ever making in your life, that you're going to look back on this and be so ashamed that you didn't go through this. You're missing out on the greatest joy of life. You're missing out on all these things like it just becomes so overwhelming that you can escape it from seeping into your brain and then you start processing it. And then you those thoughts that you've heard from other people become your own. And why do you think that is specific to this thing about having kids as opposed to you're going to regret if you never go to Bali, you're going to regret if you never do this. It right. always seems to be about kids. And I get that, yeah. you know, one person's experience they, if it's bringing them joy, mm -hmm. that they feel that other people should experience that joy, therefore they're projecting on you, which is wrong. Yeah. But what do you think it is about this one thing where people I, want people yeah. want to be so con so are so adamant about convincing you that if you don't do this, you are really going to be making a big mistake and you're going to regret it. That just right. seems to be so heavy, and it doesn't seem to have led up much even with everything that's been going on with the child-free movement and right. being more vocal about this space. Yes. And it depends also on obviously the people, the person, whoever's telling you this or wherever you're hearing it from. But when people truly believe in their hearts that this is, you are meant to be on this planet to procreate, they are relentless, relentless in their pursuit of making you change your mind and so that you have a baby. So it's that level of you are so wrong and just being told over and over. And then there's also the people that tell you that, that aren't even truly in that belief system that you were born to procreate, but they're so, it's such a um, systemic belief that they even join in and say like, when are you having, how are you, how are you not having a kid? Like that is just crazy talk. You're not thinking straight. You're going to regret it. So almost everybody is under this brainwashing uh, idea, brainwashed idea of like, we must all do this. So therefore, we're going to try really hard for you to make sure that you do this no matter what it so, takes. So in your opinion, do you think for some and not everyone, yeah. it's more of a fundamental incentive to project this type of, you know, as opposed to, I'm looking for your best interest that if you have a kid, you're going to be a happier human being. Yeah, it's completely It's more blanket. fundamental than personal. It's completely a blanket. And the, the proof is there, right? Because if the idea is to just procreate and have kids, then those same people that are telling me to do it are also telling, are, are also happy with the idea that perhaps an 18-year-old or a 19-year-old that has no financial backing that is not set up to be a parent that is not in good emotional or perhaps physical health and maybe their partner has left already like there's there's no separation from what type of parent are you going to be because if there was that would be different right if people came to be like well you're you know when i was in my 30s like you're a professional you have a career you're established like all these other reasons that you should be a mom, right, would sort of say, okay, at least you can see like the responsibility level. Um, but when you're, when a person is just advocating for everyone to have kids, no matter who they are, even if it's someone who clearly is not ready for parenthood, then you see it's just blanket. Right. I believe yeah. that everyone should have kids no matter what. And then you get into the quote unquote, you'll just figure it out for those who. Yeah, are exactly. Not you'll just place. figure it out. And the reason why it gets so complicated is that this fear of future regret is extremely emotional. So like I said before, I can justify, I can analyze, I can um, just lay it all out for someone and they still can't see the story that they have created in your head, because that's what it is. You create the story in your head because as this information coming is coming in, well, 
all my friends are doing it. My siblings are doing it. I'm going to, you know, people are telling you you're going to end up alone. You're never going to be able to hang out with us again. We don't, we're not going to be able to relate on what we speak with. So all these things are going on around you and there's random strangers and, and also people that, you know, telling you you're going to regret it. So in your mind, you start to build a story of you, you know, 20, 30, 40 years from now. And with all the fears that have been planted in your head, you're going to end up alone. You're going to look back at life and wish you had kids. You're going to do this. You're going to that. So it may not really be coming internally from what I feel or what I think, but it's almost impossible to block that out. And quieting the noise is also a big part of my program because it's once you really realize how inundated you are with this pronatalist messaging is when you can at least start peeling the layers and start looking for in the middle of the onion is what we truly want, right? Just like we have to do with everything else in life. Like when we have to come to a conclusion by ourselves, like you need to peel that onion, like take away what so-and-so thinks, take away what so-and-so says, take away how they feel about this. And then you have to find the core center. It's like, okay, how do I feel about this. So all this fear of regret is on the outside of the onion because you're yeah. just starting to make up all these stories. Yeah. And it's tough too, when you're younger and you're much, some people are more influenced, right? And, right. and because you're just figuring out life and then you have all these people telling you to do yeah. this thing Yeah. and you know, and then on top of it, they're telling you all the repercussions if you don't do this thing that, you know, it's going to be a bad life for you. Right. And it's really unhealthy. Yes. Right. I mean, this is very it's unhealthy awful. Yeah, and a horrible, awful. any other subject or topic, people would go about this in a different way, Yes, you know, but it seems like it goes right for the jugular. Mm -hmm. You're going to be unhappy if you don't have children. Mm -hmm. And regardless of where you are in life, yeah. externally, internally, all that stuff, this is a, this is a fact. And it's, it's unfortunate again, right. you know, I would say, yeah, I you know I don't think I've ever heard anyone say, you know what, kids aren't for you. I hear, I see what you're going through, and I understand that you won't have kids. However, gotta go credit my mom. I think your mom too at this point. Well, no, I won't. I won't speak for you, but my mom did say that she understands why I chose not to have kids. But it took me yes. a long time to get yes. there with her. Yes, and yeah. um, I don't think she never pressured me. Yeah, be clear, but she definitely understands why I chose this path. But right, exactly. It took a long way to get there, a, a long time to get there for me and for her to understand it. But yeah, it's toxic, right? I mean, I would say this is a real toxic problem. It is. And the reason that it's toxic is getting back to what we were talking about in the beginning is that you are feeling stuck, right? Because you're, you, you're unable to make this life altering decision, right? And you can't move forward with your life because fear of future regret because you're, you can't say, unless of course you're someone who was, um, you know, knew from very early on that they didn't want kids, never thought about it again, and actually see kids as such a, um, in, in a, in a negative light that it would affect them so negatively. So they don't even care when people are telling them like, you're going to regret this. So, you know, definitely not talking about those people, but there are people even who didn't have to go through the whole process that I went through and the women in my program are going through that there's still a hint of hopefully I made the right decision. It does. It will pop up every now and then of what if things look different in the future? What if, what do I do if my if you have a partner, what I do with my partner is no longer there. And, you know, you start to think about all the things. Yeah, yeah. I think, and it brings up what I've self-realized, which is there's a big difference between, oh my God, what I regret, am I going to regret not having kids? Mm -hmm. To being curious about what your life would have looked like if you did have them. I yes. think that that is very different. Yeah. And I think it's an important thing. And I feel like that would be like the very first step as far as approaching people that, you know, like you said before, there are people that are born, they know what they want and they go for it. That could be kids. That could be the latest mm -hmm. MacBook computer, whatever it is. They want it. They're going to take, they're going to do it. Mm -hmm. And then there's people that are leaning like, I'm not sure if I need this. I don't, I'm not sure if I want this. And that's where the gray zone gets confusing, which you talk about a lot in your program. Yeah. And, and it's not so much that I'm not sure. I, it's I, what I have found to be the reality. It's more that I 
I want to be child free, but there's just a million things holding me back. And by the way, none of those million things have to do with me, right? Those I I have internalized it and now it's in my head, but the root was never in my head to begin with. So yeah. 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 But But getting back to the point about being curious, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, if I could say, oh, wow, you know, I I do wonder what it would be like if I had another human being here with me and and if I had to, you know, take care of them or if I went to do things, what would that life be like? That's totally healthy. People shouldn't confuse that with, oh, I'm regretting not having kids. Yes, exactly. And the thing is that people will point it out to you. So if you say, um, for example, it's happened to me, I've looked at a baby or a child or a toddler, I happen to like kids, you happen to like kids. And I'm just like, oh my God, so cute, (laughs) you know? And I'm just like, I can't get my, stop looking at them because they're just look adorable. And then whoever I'm with will be like, you know, does this mean you still want one? You know, like it, I'm like, it's, it's just, it's just so interesting how that happens. Right. And it's like, no, I can have that moment. Like you just said, I can have that moment. I can wonder, we've talked to our community about, you know, it's, it's very healthy to think about what, our baby would look like, right? Like you and I have talked about it. Like, would it be like a yeah. little Latin dancer that, you know, doesn't shut or a up? Latin non-dancer, or would if it they be got like a non-dancer, very tall, you know, green-eyed, you know, introvert. So we talk about that all the time. It's just kind of fun to think about and imagine. But like to your point, it's completely normal and it's okay. And it doesn't mean that we have regret on our minds. It just means it's just a fun conversation to have. Right. And by the way, we're completely guessing. We don't know. Uh, You know, just like when people say you two would have beautiful children, nobody knows. Right. That's just like, it's a nice gesture that people say, but things like that even get into someone's head of, Oh, maybe our child would be beautiful. So Perhaps so what, we should have one, you know, and then it just starts to spiral in your head and starts to be really so confusing. So why do you think that is? Why do you think being curious about something can turn so quickly into, oh, am I regretting something around this specific thing? You know, because I feel like you can be curious about a lot of things, but you don't regret it or you don't, it's right. not interpreted as regret as much. Right. Um. I don't think it's related to regret, like just thinking about like having those thoughts. I think if anything, those, um, I think those type of, of comments just start to get like the engine revving, right? right? Of like, oh, maybe our kid would be cute. Or I wonder, cause I've heard this from a lot of women, um, that I've talked to saying like, oh, I just, you know, I see my partner being so good with my dog and I know that that would make him a good dad and that he would, you know, be amazing. And am I taking that away from him? Or So these little comments, like, just start to, like, rev the engine up of doubt, right? And then it just, like, starts and starts and starts and starts. Yeah. So yeah. it's and about, it's, like, managing that. Yeah, and it's compounded with also that this is, the biggest decision you're going to make. In yeah, life. And, exactly. You know, that, I'm going to say it again. Like, this is the biggest decision you're yeah, going to make. There's no argue, argument around mm-hmm. it. You know, I mean, it really is. And I'd, I'd be, if you have an argument of a bigger decision in your life, leave it in the comments. <laughs> I'm actually really curious because I've been searching for it. And that's yeah. one reason why we're both so passionate about like, there should be more dialogue around the biggest decision someone will make in their life, whichever decision you would make. Right. Right. And it's very clear that to what you were saying earlier, Mm-hmm. that it's laid out what <laughs> it looks like yeah. to have a child, but yeah. it's very black and white what yeah. it looks like to not have a child. And that's right. what all these child-free accounts and what we're doing and a lot of people are doing yes. is to shine a light on that specific lifestyle says it's going to be okay. Right. I keep bringing that up because I think that is at the core of me personally on why I'm so involved with the child-free connection and why I think it's so important to have these conversations. Yeah, of course. Um, of course. Because yeah. Because we're changing something that needs to be changed in my yeah, opinion. Yeah. And a lot of regret, a lot of fear of future regret comes from the fact of the unknown, right? There you go. So 
if you don't know something, it's scary, right? right. You you get a new job, you you're starting on Monday, and you just have all sorts of anxiety because you have no idea what you're walking into. You're making a speech. It happens to me. I get really nervous every time because I have no idea what I'm walking into. What is the audience going to be like? It's it's going to be received. Is it going to be well received? All the things. So it starts to just put in your mind the romanticized version of parenting, right? Because everything we're hearing is positives, right? Your kids would be so cute. You would make such great parents. You would be such a good mom. What if um, you're not going to be able to hang out with your friends anymore? Like all this is highlighting and romanticizing the idea of parenting while bringing down the idea of being child free. So that's another thing. The romanticism behind it is another thing that gets into people's brains. And it's like, oh my God, I'm going to miss out on all these beautiful moments. Which, yeah, I always say yeah. that, you know, I feel like equally you can talk about the good moments, but they should also be talking about the bad moments. I'm not talking about one per yeah, per particular person, both. but I'm just saying, yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's a combination of like the good and the bad. When you're mm -hmm. weighing the biggest decision in your life, you look at both sides. And unfortunately, there's not enough, oh, this is what comes with being a parent. You know, it's very rare. You can find a lot of dialogue around whether it's a conversation or a book or, you know, yeah. podcast like, hey, by the way, if you're going to become a parent, I'm going to give you all the red flags, you know, and, and all the unpredictabilities yeah. that come with it. Yeah. So be prepared. And I think you look at it a little differently, right? To your point and what you said, using your word, romanticizing this life choice of yeah. having children is not usually how it turns out. You know, it can right. turn out. And it, again, there's going to be good moments and bad moments. And I'm saying it's going to be doom and gloom either way, but like, you know, it's just yeah. interesting. And it's, it's, it's funny that you're calling them red flags, but it's uh, it's red, definitely red flags to you, but it's really reality. It's the reality of parenting, which as child-free people to us, it's like these giant red flags because we're just like not relating to that idea at all. Right. Um, but it really just is like their day-to-day -day reality, right? Um, I just had a conversation with someone yesterday who was, you know, said all these things. And then at the end about, you know, she's confused about what to do, but it's definitely, you know, 90% child free, but of course she has all the, I'm going to miss out. I'm going to miss out. I'm going to miss out. And then she even brought to the fact of like, although I'm aware, cause I've seen it with my sister, I've seen it with my friends of what it entails. And whenever I'm at either of their houses, I'm like, you know, not for me. Right. So even knowing that feeling that seeing it, you're still romanticizing it because you've been so conditioned to believe a certain thing. So yeah. it's, it's really, really interesting how that happens. Too bad you can't have like a trial run as a parent just to really like for a week where yeah, you can really. Take, that would take away the idea of parenting, right? Like, what do you mean? Because, because what if we got good kids and they were well behaved? No, no, no. A, a structured trial run yeah. where you get an equal amount of the good and the bad. You know what I mean? As far as I'm just making this up, by the way, I'm not yeah. saying. No, 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 I know, I know. But I'm just, it would be interesting, right? If I could take a week of like, hey, we're going to, we're going to, we have, this is a structured class, a structured, you know, um, moment you're going to have in a oh, week oh, where you're going to oh. get, you know, what yes. all the aspects yeah. that come with a healthy child, let's say, because there unfortunately are situations where your child is unhealthy and it's, we won't go down that road, but yeah. you know, traditionally, quote unquote, mm -hmm. this is what life will feel like as a parent. And we're going to give you the good and the bad. You're going to have the good moments and you're going to have bad moments. Now, I know that there are any parents out there listening. You're probably like, well, if it's not your DNA. And we who don't you care are, about the parents listening. And no, I know. No, but I'm just are. saying. Yeah. I mean, it could help. I know that people go into it having no idea, which is very confusing. We talked about in our community about how um, people you know, have friends who have kids and then the friends will say to them, like, I'm just so shocked at how hard this is. And, oh, yeah. and, um, for us, it's, of course you want your friend to be happy and you empathize and all the things, but at the same time, having someone say, I didn't realize how hard this was going to be. is like really mind blowing to us because we've, we're so aware of how hard that is. And that's, part of the reason why we haven't chosen it right so yeah. it gets confusing as to 
how did you not know it was going to be really, really hard, especially considering your situation, which is ABCD, right? Yeah. You're both out of work. Um, you're both, you know, one of you is sick or whatever the, the, the details are. But it's really interesting to hear that too. Like, I didn't know how hard it was going to be when we're like always focusing on, on that and how that's going to affect our lives and all, and all the things. But yeah, I've I wanted Go ahead. I was just going to say, I, I just wanted to add real quick. I do have one friend, you will, you know who, who he is, who actually, and he's kind of, he's funny and he's, he's got a good sense of humor. He's a little sarcastic, but um, that's several times that, you know, he knows about what we do and everything. And the several times I brought it up, he was just like, you made the right decision. Being a parent sucks. Now he's half joking, but he's not really like he, he, well, he, yeah, I know. he tells me all the time. He's like this, you, 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 you did the right thing. Congratulations. Yeah. Because this, this lifestyle is horrible for me. Right. And he loves his kids and all that stuff. But you know, mm -hmm. it's just interesting. Cause I always think about you. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, of course. Yeah. And it's just the idea of someone not really evaluating. Is this for me? Right. Which wasn't available, which is what we're trying to do with the community. What I'm trying to do with my program. Like, let's just think this through in, we're in a way that through. like do it if having a kid makes you happy please do that but if you're really leaning towards a chalky life but you just have fears around what it could be because you're starting to build stories in your head from what people are telling you and you're very unclear on how this could possibly lead to happiness and joy and fulfillment that's what we're here for um that's what we're trying to share that's what we're trying to teach and that's what we talk about but I do want to, um, oh, actually, before I go into that, I also wanted to go in fear of future regret also highlights what you're going to miss, right? Supposedly miss from, from having kids. So it completely, like we talked about before, like you're going to regret not seeing them grow up, not look into your eyes and say, I love you. And like all these romanticized versions of parenthood. But what happens is, is that it does not focus on the gain when you, when you, when you are ruminating on fear of future regret, you're completely dismissing the gains that you will have as a child-free person. And those gains, I mean, as far as I've seen, 100% of the time outweigh what you might miss in this romanticized version of parenthood. At, you know, I'm talking about people I've spoken to and I can tell that they are either child free or very close to being child free. So you know what I mean? It's very interesting. I never thought of that. Mm -hmm. And I personally only saw the gains, you know, and, and I can just speak for myself. It was interesting because I was always thinking about, oh, I'm going to have to like put all this stuff to the side when I have kids, when I contemplated it, when yeah. I was going through my process. Yeah. Of, and that I, I always saw the stuff that I'm going to miss out on by having children, not all the stuff that I'm going to get. But I mean, that's just me. And that shows you how certain I was about what I wanted in life. <laughs> and here I am being, oh, here I am being, quote unquote, selfish. Um, no. no, that's great. And I think people feel like you. Absolutely. But yeah. I think that this, when we're talking about fear or future regret, the mindset is loss. I right? know. But yeah. I, that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I think it's yeah. very, it's yeah. very insightful in a lot of ways because I never looked at it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. naturally, I saw. Yeah. You know, I'm just gonna have to pull over and and get rid of all the fun stuff. But so talk a little right. bit about that more. I think that's really important about yeah, the game. I mean, I I think it's and that's why people get so confused and it gets so cloudy and 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 you start to really doubt yourself because at the end of the day, this is all about trust, right? So it's. Who do you trust? Do you trust yourself? Do you know how to trust yourself? Because that sometimes we don't, right? Do you know how to trust your inner voice? What your most deepest um, longings and desires? Like what really makes you happy? Do you trust that? And it's or, okay, by the way, I just add, if yeah. you don't, because that's a process. And yeah, I didn't trust course. myself for a long time. Yeah, so of course. It's part of it. So, but And that's what, it, that's what I do in the program too, because not being able to trust yourself and not being able to to even know how to start trusting yourself? Like, how, what, how do I even do that, right? Like, someone who might be like, how do I even trust myself, like you just said? Like, if you don't know, you don't know. And to that point, I think it's a really poor time to make a big life-altering decision <laughs> when you're not sure if you trust if yourself. You, trust you just got to be really transparent 
check the ego, yes. look yourself in the mirror and just ask yourself that question and then just hit the pause button. You still might end up having kids. You might not, but at least you are just, let me just figure out this part first. But yeah. okay, let's say for someone does. And you're not really hitting the pause button. I just want to clarify, like when, you know, in my program, we're actually, we're hitting the pause button, not as far as like, I'll deal with this later, but as far as like, let me get into this now, right? Because right. if I don't understand this, um, well, make any decision. Let me love. figure some stuff out before let I make figure, any, yeah, make, let me make figure big out this decisions out. in life, right? Yeah. Just like if you're buying a house, you're mm -hmm. going to look at your bank account. You're going to trust the fact that you're going to be able to pay for your mortgage. Yes. You're going to be able to, you want the play, you know, you're going to, you're going to go through ideal a thing, but people still don't do that. Right. People still buy homes and don't think how we think it through, right? We break everything down to every possible scenario well, so that, that we can make a right decision. Yeah, right? I mean, that just defined the 2008 housing crisis. Really. But yeah, <laughs> right. I know what you're saying. So it's, it is important to break it down and figure things out before you make these big life decisions. But also, like even with the housing crisis or even with us, like buying property, like everybody has their own opinion. I mean, how many people have said, you have to own a house, like especially because we're older growing up. That was part of the dream, right? That's part of that, yeah. that's part of the dream, the check off with like kids, the house. And, you know, all of a sudden now people are like, don't buy a house. I mean, not don't buy. A house. Obviously, the market is crappy right now. And the interest rates are ridiculous. So um, definitely not the best time to buy a house. But I'm talking about as a mind shift of it, it's not a checkbox that you need to do by the time you're 27, right? Yeah. Because it's just not realistic yeah. anymore. Well, there's a list of them. Um, okay, so let me just ask you this. So let some, let's say someone is very, you know, has a lot of trust in themselves and their decision and they've peeled away the metaphor you used earlier, yeah. the onion, those layers, yeah. um, and they're at their core, but they're still confused because yes. that is a factor too. Mm -hmm. And what do you do then? Well, do you mean confused in general or confused, confused about, in, are you bringing regret into it? Or you're just saying they're so confused about their choice to have. They're still feeling fear of regret mm -hmm. after they've been through the process of really getting to know themselves. Right. Right. I mean, there's so many steps. That's what. Yeah. I don't want to jump ahead. I know. <laughs> That's what I know. I don't want to jump ahead, but I am yeah, curious yeah. myself. Yeah. 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 You know, if you're more centered, but yeah. you still have this fear of regret. There that, are so many more steps that you can take because you need to evaluate, okay, let me peel away the, these layers, but peeling away these layers, like you're acting like, okay, now I've peeled away the layers, what? But those are like very important steps, mm, the peeling of the onion. Gotcha. So you're not really like, okay, now I'm there, what? Right? The journey and the process is getting there. So it's not that simple. Gotcha. So and you're the saying- the idea is once you're there, this- future fear of regret starts to um, fizzle out because the layers are mm. showing you how the story that you're inventing in your head about this future regret is not really a story that's true. Wow. I feel like I'm getting schooled by you today. <laughs> this is good stuff. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it's not just like, okay, what now? It doesn't happen like okay. that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So you want to trust yourself and also like you want to trust yourself now in the present. And if you tr really trust yourself, you're also going to trust future you, right? Because let's say I have future um, fear of regret in the future. That's saying to myself, okay, I don't trust. I feel like that future me is going to look down back at, at present me and it's going to be like, Oh, she was the worst. She didn't know how to make a decision. She was, you know, and just like belittling me and making me like less than and putting a lot of shame on who I am now where you don't, it doesn't need to work that way, right? Our goal is for it not to be that way. Our goal is to trust ourselves now and trust that our future self we'll look back at any choice we make in our lives and say, thank God. No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Go I broke your stride there. <laughs> oh, that's what I would have. That's I know, what my future you know, self was so saying. Funny. And I know that there's a lot of people listening that feel the same way as you, but the goal in, and this, again, I don't mean by like choosing or not choosing child free, but 
you want to like look back at yourself and say, and I tell you this all the time too, because you tend to fall a little bit into the regret trap. Um, and it's, it's, it's about saying like, okay, at the time I trusted myself and my choices. So that was obviously, I made the right choice for myself at that time. So there is like a sense of love and compassion to look back at yourself when there's trust, yeah. right? I'd love to add on to that. I think, you know, there's some value in looking at your past as well and the decisions you've made in your past mm -hmm. and sitting in that seat of comfort, knowing like, okay, up until this moment of now, I have made a series of decisions. They all haven't been perfect. Some of them have been right. Some of them have been wrong, but I've learned from them and I've grown, mm -hmm. but I'm always moving forward yeah. up and to the right, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think having that trust in yourself. And that really gave me a lot of trust is like, and it made me feel a little calmer about the decision-making day-to-day decision-making that I'm doing or big life decision-making mm -hmm. is that I can sit in that seat of comfort. Like I'm okay. I'm okay now, which means that I've been making these decisions right. the right way. Yeah. Right. That's a great point. That's a great yeah. point. Evaluating other decisions that you have made. How has that felt? And also you can evaluate a past decision that you've made based on what other people think or other people's opinion. And, usually, and you can evaluate how has that gone for you, it's always, right? It, you 99% <laughs> of the time has gone poorly. Yeah, exactly. So I there's mean, a could... lot of layers to the trust pie for sure. And um, yeah. And yeah. I think that trust is a really, really big part of stepping away from that fear. But there are so many layers, but it's completely doable. Um, you know, quieting the noise, as we said, is just so, so important. Trusting yourself, getting through those layers and realize that this story that you're making up in your head of what could be in the future is based probably not based on what you truly want, what you truly believe and what's truly going to make you happy in your life. Yeah. Just a little anecdote. I mean, talking about being influenced by others. Yeah. I just remember trying to rock a bandana in the mid nineties because someone told me that I should do that. And it was like, I look back and it was a horrible mistake. <laughs> it was not good. Look for me. I'm not even joking. Like I was looking like really bad. <laughs> So that's just a perfect example. I mean, it just popped in my head, like specifically because the person was putting so much pressure. You got to wear the bandana. And I'm like, yeah. And I started wearing it to classes and all this stuff. And I look back and I just, another one, I spent a half a semester yeah. not wearing shoes, walking around barefoot. Where? Because, in school? Because a bunch of my friends were doing it because they were hippies and they were smoking weed. And they were like, and then I just, now I look at it and I'm not the kind of guy that walks around barefoot, like on campus. I never in told you that. In college in or high college. school? Oh, in college. You said in, high school. Yeah, in okay. college. Yeah, not wearing shoes in college, yeah. in classes. I have friends that still make fun of me. Again, something I was influenced, bad decision. So this is what I'm saying. Like, I'm not even joking. Like, really stack up those things that you've done. We've all been guilty of making decisions based <laughs> off of influence, whether that's a friend or a celebrity or whatever. And really ask yourself, yeah. is that for me? <laughs> I mean, yeah, those of you watching on YouTube, we love to hear these uh, bad yeah. decisions that we've made. I'm sure I have some. None are popping up at the moment. But yeah, those are the best. Those high school, college decisions where people, everybody else was doing it. And you're like, yeah, I do it too. Like, that's how, you know, I'm cool too. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, anyway, this is a little deeper, but I love that example because it does apply as far as looking back and seeing how, the outcome of when someone influences us as opposed to when we just listen to ourselves and do what we want and uh, what we think is good. Yeah. <laughs> Magnify that times a thousand with having a kid or a million or maybe yeah. a billion. And just to end it off, I like to say that all this, I think, culminates into be so, so careful with who you listen to, right? Yeah. Take that source and, uh, and, and, and really evaluate who this person is. And this goes all across the board, not just who you know and that you talk to personally or that you've met a coworker or a friend or a family member, but what you read um, and what you, for example, like I've seen so many articles on I was child free, but now I'm not, I have a baby and I'm the happiest ever, right? Something like that. So that title alone confuses people and it's already like seeping into their brain. 
But if you really look into those people's stories and you really dive in, first of all, you're not child free and then have a kid. Like you're either child free or you're a parent, right? It's a completely different story. So it's just about like listening to the resources. I had read this article, I think it was about a year ago and I can't remember it, but the person really went in on, you know, how happy she is that she made the choice and that her baby's everything. And now she's finally learned joy and love and the whole thing. And then I clicked on her name and I did all this research on her and she's um, extremely comes from like an extremely faith based community and is part of this faith faith based um, uh, organization. So it's there's just different things about people talking to us. Like just be careful of what you're reading, what you're seeing, who you're listening to, because ultimately their stories, their belief systems, their idea of what you should and shouldn't do is completely different. So that just com- that just adds to the layer of confusion. Yeah, and not just listening to, but who you surround yourself with. You know, that's yeah. one of the biggest things I've learned is you want to surround yourself with not only like-minded people, but, yeah. but you know, you just got to be careful. In yeah, that regard. absolutely. Because, because some people are very convincing. And I know. If, you're, if you have some insecurity and you're, yes. if you're confused and lost, you will make a decision that is wrong. And, and, and if it's life altering, it's a real problem because yeah. you can't, you can't unring that bell, so to speak, when it comes to having a child. Right. Exactly. So, um, yeah, I agree with you. I think who you surround yourself with, by the way, join our membership community. That's definitely a sea oh, of like-minded people. Yes. And, um, yeah, we absolutely love it in there. We're having a good time and, um, it's expanding all the time and, uh, yeah, definitely check that out. The childfreeconnection.com has all the information. Yep. Well, this has been yeah. a great conversation. Yes. And I learned a lot, like I said, like, thank you. You schooled me today. <laughs> Are we going to go to the pool? And I, we will go to the pool. We're going to head to the pool. <laughs> all right. We'll see you all next time. All right. Bye. Bye.